Welcome to the channel, everyone. I'm Scratch. Hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing day. Let me know in the comments down below how is your day going so far, guys. I've been I've been out a bit in the morning with the <laughs> with the family. The rain caught us. We got home soaked. My God. Uh, definitely, definitely love living in the in the UK when it's rainy, which is pretty much all the time. In today's video, guys, we're gonna talk about the upcoming event for this weekend. Seems like they are uh, bringing in a twist right we have a different event not something that we were expected and it's been a while since we had it is the second time uh to have this event in raid shadow legends and yes i am talking about two acts on primal shards seems like all the saving up that i've been doing is finally paying off i have 10 primal shards ready to rumble on the two acts basically they've only done two acts on them properly once when we had the uh, double chances to get mythicals but we had the the same chance to summon legendaries now this time around they are doubling the chance to summon epics they are doubling the chances to summon legendaries and they're doubling the chances to summon mythicals okay uh it's actually pretty interesting now we have quite a few mythical champions in the game and my god i have quite a few of them that are my most wanted i'll be very very honest with you guys i know which one is my most wanted right but i'll be very honest with you i would like them all uh, I would like them all from my list because there's so many and they're so powerful, right? Then we have a 15x progressive chance together with this. So they're basically two different events starting from uh, uh, Friday. Uh, then we have Saturday and we have Sunday, guys. So keep that in mind. Now we do have, of course, the Deck of Fate event that will start tomorrow. Don't engage with it. Just wait for Friday because if you're planning to summon, it's honestly the best uh, the best moment to do it on uh, on friday you know together with the uh, with the event at least like that you're kind of like uh shooting two birds with uh with one stone basically you know because you need to summons for the deck of fate and we are getting 150 titan points uh, from it so you can skip it if you haven't skipped nothing else before most probably i'm not going to try and get the rewards because i'm not expecting anything crazy from here just knowing that you can actually do it by a uh, leveling up champions but who knows maybe just maybe i'm gonna i'm gonna get the uh, i'm gonna get tricked by these two x primals who knows who knows so how you may notice on the screen the 15x progressive chance guys uh is on uh these specific champions now we're gonna uh, have a quick chat about uh each one of them in uh, just a second before i quickly want to talk a bit about the the mythicals so the banner lords and Rock, I'm not very interested in uh, in him personally, but he's pretty solid as well. Galatir is absolutely amazing. I've made a spotlight on him, and I'll be very honest, a lot of people were not interested in him. And I'm seeing this because I know what views the, the videos are getting. I can see when the people are uh, super hyped for a champion and when they're not. And I feel like a lot of people were really, really not into this champion at all. They thought that he's kind of trash, you know, but... He is a beast, man. Not only for PvE, but for PvP as well. And yeah, he's definitely on uh, on my list uh, to, to get him, you know. I don't necessarily think that he's the most wanted. Definitely not. But he is he is in my top five. He is in my top five. Sigfrund as well. Hell yeah. He's probably... I don't even know if... Probably he's top five too. I don't think I'll put him in the top three, even though he's the craziest nuker in the game. I feel like uh, I feel like I could uh, I could get some better stuff, but hey, if I'll get a sick friend, I'll be super super happy, probably over the moon, you know. <laughs> and uh, we do have a amazing barbarian, Alas, very very powerful. He's the most powerful defense nuker in the game, guys. So a hundred percent, not a champion that you want to mess up with. He's absolutely nuts. Actually, even the new one that they've added, Gizmac. He's busted, okay? Like, he is really busted. I got my ass whooped in Live Arena twice by this uh, this champion. And my god, the damage that he deals in this form is just, like, mind-blowing, okay? Literally mind-blowing. Unexpected. Like, when I encountered him the first time and I saw how hard he hits, I was a bit like, jaw drop, you know? <laughs> like, honestly, I was like, for real? Did he just completely wiped the floor <laughs> with me? Uh, Lazarius, yes, top two. Lazarius is top two for me. I have a six star soul for him as well, so that really, really uh, wants 
uh, makes me to want to get him uh, more than uh, than the rest, you know. And uh, we have, of course, Crixia, who is my number one. Not gonna lie, she's my number one on the list. So who knows? Who knows what's uh, what's going to happen? Uh, Skinwalkers, Mazamel. I wouldn't complain if I would get her either, but she's probably out of uh, out of top five, no questions asked. Uh, Garel, Garel is insane for Hydra Clan boss, insane for Live Arena. So yes, she is in my top five. Uh, definitely, yeah. That's that's basically what I would uh, like to get. Carnage, not here yet. Uh, they don't have one, but we do have one coming pretty soon for the Undead as well. Uh, Aphidus, not a fan of the of the dude, you know. Uh, not a fan of the dwarf one. Shadow King, Lady Mikage, we have her. Silver Watchers, I have her. But my top five is probably what I've uh, just named it before. And yes, probably you guys are like Scratch. You just named all of them. Do you want to get all of them? I mean, uh, I wouldn't say no if I would uh, if I would be that fortunate. But it's definitely not going to happen with uh, with ten primals. My mercy is actually pretty funky at the moment. Fifty two primals in. The last mythical costed me 138 primals, if I'm not mistaken, not 128. Uh, since then, I think I for, uh, formatted the PC once. And uh, that was, of course, Arbaiz. With the, with the voids as well, 114 in the Mercy. We have, uh, we have Taras right now on the, on the 15x. I just YOLO'd 10 voids that I had available. Uh, probably not, not going to, to bother with it. You know, 15x progressive chance is not, uh, is not that amazing. And if I am planning to spend any dollars whatsoever uh, this month, even though my budget is gone for this month, uh, will be probably on a, on a primal pack. But leaving that on the side, guys. The 15x champions. Some of them are actually on the on the Prism Crystal event, right? So we have um, Theodore, super, super awesome champion. I'm still running him in my dragon. I'm still running him in my spider, uh, spider dungeon. And yeah, this, uh, this skill right here is just nuts. Increases the duration of poison and HP burn and then detonates them, you know, and is actually doing a, a lot of damage versus uh, versus bosses on a three turn cooldown. He brings his uh, own poisons, poison sensitivity, increased speed on the on the entire team, decreased speed with an AOE attack. And look at the reviews; he has a lot of uh, a lot of reviews. So I'm not sure how he's only a 4.9 in the spider, honestly, because uh, you bring a burner, he just detonates them, bang, you know, it, it, it's as simple as that. So <laughs> I do think he should be a five in the in the spider as well. But the reviews are literally saying everything. He's just not an arena champion. He's not great for the Sand Devils Necropolis, even though you can use him a bit in there. Uh, not great for the Phantom Shogun either. But again, you can probably uh, do something with him. But other than that, he's just absolutely uh, amazing, you know. Then we have... Uh, Bad El Kazar. Uh, I'm not really using Bad El Kazar in many, many places, guys. I'll be very honest with you. And mainly what I'm using him is the Cursed City. I tend to use him all the time when I need to do these uh, clan quests, put f uh, 10 debuffs on a, on a boss on any of the stages. I'm always using him uh, because of the poisons and stuff. But uh, he's still useful. For progression, he's still a monster, you know. I, I remember even now, five years ago, when I summoned my first Bad El Kazar, how much impacted my account because I was still not able to beat stage 20 on uh, on dungeons when I summoned my first battle Kazar guys and my god he completely changed my account the heal is still very powerful the passive is still very effective uh the poisons you know so the crit rate aura early on mid game even in the end game till you uh, reach the hard mode stages he is a powerhouse uh hard mode stage is kind of like a power creep to be the champion but it happens. What can you do? Then we have Calvalex. Still one of those few champions that managed to elude me, you know. So from here, from this faction, I don't have Fortus, which I'm praying that I'll never summon, and Calvalex, which I do hope that I'll summon one day because he is actually uh, pretty interesting. He does have an enemy max HP hit, which is not that powerful, honestly. But he has this very unique passive that places poisons on enemies at the beginning of the round. And he will do this before the enemies take any actions, before any anything uh, goes on them, like immunity and stuff. So it's a very, very effective uh, uh, passive to be used even in uh, in dungeons versus waves, Doom Tower, etc. This is, there are kind of like two options on how you can uh, speed farm dungeons. Actually, three. Let's be honest with Taras. But you have Seer blowing up the stuff. Taras can pretty much do the same thing, 
or you have a uh, Calvalex, you know, and uh, Poison Detonation is still very, very effective. So you can definitely use him. Then we have Xavia, because we were talking about Poison uh, Detonation. She is a rock star, a hundred, a hundred percent. She was the second legendary I ever summoned on, uh, on my account. Great for the Fire Knight progression wise, great for Clan Boss progression wise, especially that you can. Uh, stop her a3 and she's not going to blow up the poisons uh, aoe attack she deals good damage she can be a nuker too she can block revive definitely don't sleep on her and great for bosses progression wise up to stage 20 she's gonna blow up all the bosses like honestly spiders dragons golems whatever you guys want xavia will blow them up and she has an attack aura for all battles which is actually very very good and moving over to the void legendaries guys we have a uh, Supreme Kale. I still don't have the champion. I wouldn't necessarily go crazy to summon him. If I'll get him down the line, I wouldn't be too disappointed, honestly, because uh, I'm sure I can find some sort of use for him at some point with the Cursed Siri and things. Uh, he's very, very strong for progression. He's honestly thinking about it. He might be one of the most powerful, the most impactful champions for progression in the game. Not only that he's void, but he has AoE attack with the weaken. You don't need accuracy. AoE attack puts poisons. You don't need accuracy. Increases the duration of all debuffs by one turn. Again, you don't need accuracy on a three turn cooldown. So this is going to be massive for pretty much everyone looking to progress in the game. Then you have increased accuracy on all allies, which is above that you need. is an AoE attack, pretty good multipliers. Uh, decreased resistance. Again, you don't need accuracy for that. And it gives you turn meter, you know. So it's definitely pretty... Uh, pretty, pretty interesting uh, for progression. Very, very powerful for it. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily complain if I would summon one at some point. Then we have Venus, guys. I was actually just rebuilding my Venus today for uh, uh, for uh, Hydra team on Brutal, and I decided to still keep her on a curse set. Even though I have Krisk on a cursed, I decided to have both of them. That will just increase the, the chance for me to land the, the, the debuff from the set. And yeah, I will use her together with Cupidus. Together they activate this extra extra skill. She has HP burn, defense down, weaken, poisons. Still, still a strong champion after all this time. She is a vanilla champion, right? So uh it's nice seeing that quite a few vanilla champions are still very effective five years later, you know. Then we have some epics. We have a Venomage. Uh, I'm using Venomage quite a bit against the Nether Spider, against Cursed City, against some uh, secret rooms in the Doom Tower, and she is one of the best epics in, uh, in the game, in my opinion. She's definitely in my top 20 as, a, as an epic. She has this unique passive where you have a damage reduction, you have a healing, re uh, healing reduction, you have a poisons, you have defense down, decrease attack, detonates the poison, so you have quite a, quite a few things coming from, uh, from the champion. Then we have uh, Delijah, since we're here, she is being used for uh, the mythical fusion, and I'm not necessarily a big fan of her, I'm not using her anywhere, I'll be honest, but if you need her for the Cursed City, she's going to be massive, especially if you're using her together with other Lizardmen, because she can counterattack, you know, and uh, she can be pretty, pretty helpful, but how I mentioned, she's not something like crazy as, a, as an epic champion, she's a decent one, you know. Then we have... Uh, uh, Aishma, and she is a Night Revenant, if I'm not mistaken, right? There we go. She's being used for the Mythical Fusion too, I think. Uh, not a very interesting epic champion. Poisons on the on the A1, weaken on the on the A2, and you have uh, attacks an enemy, has a chance to decrease the duration of all uh, buffs on the target and increase the duration of all debuffs on the on the target, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call her amazing, but if if you need her for Cursed Siri in some uh, specific content, she can put in some work like most of these uh, champions can, you know. Then we have uh, uh, Akemtum, guys. Akemtum, he is a beast as well. I am uh, using him uh, in some um, more niche, niche content. Speed aura in all battles, which I like. Triple hitter. Uh, debuff spread. Probably one of the best debuff spread champions in the game. You have... Uh, AoE triple hitter, you have Hex, very effective for Hydra, effective for the Fire Knight too, uh, if you need some uh, multi-hitters, he has this uh, interesting passive, definitely a pretty solid epic champion, if you don't have one, I feel like uh, it, it is worth trying to, to summon one. And the last one that we have on the list, guys, is going to be Eurogrim. 
Eurogrim is still very good. It's kind of like a mini battle Khazar. Speed aura for all battles. You have a double hitter with a chance to land poisons. You have a cleanse. You have a heal on a single ally. And you have continuous heal. And you have poisons on uh, all enemies. On a fourth turn cooldown. This is what we have for this weekend, guys. And uh, yeah, we have some very nice champions up for, uh, for the grabs. Together with the two acts on primals. Let me know if you guys have any primal shards saved up. Waiting for this moment. or. Uh, Whenever you get some primals, you usually just yellow them and pray, pray for the best. That was all for the video. Much love, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.